Greetings, beautiful humans. I'm Jay, Pokédex entry number 201, and I'm here today to tell you an animation trick. Animation's hard. I'd know, I studied it for three years at university. Animation is especially tough in traditional 2D, when it has to be painstakingly drawn frame by frame, meaning any character or effect can take upwards of about 12 times the amount of time you may have thought it would. But there are ways to mitigate this, however. Tweens are one of them. Squash and stretch effects are another. I'm going to show a very simple way to do these in Construct 3, but for non-Construct users perhaps there's enough here for you to understand the way my simple method works and probably come up with your own, so stay tuned. Why squash and stretch? Simply put, the size at which your character sprite is drawn can do a lot of legwork for you in conveying action and motion. It infers volume, weight and material in a way that means you don't have to draw more than a few images. It's not the only tool in an animator's repertoire by far, but is one of the fundamentals most animation students will learn in their first year. With squash and stretch, you can do a little with a lot. To start with, you've seen me decorate a simple platform game level in a previous video on turning drawings into game art, so I decided it's time to do more than just jump a square around. I drew yet another character that is basically a blob turned into an animal. You don't have to do this, but be aware that this effect generally looks better with cartoon designs than it does with realistic ones, which may look somewhat odd if they're squishing around like a water balloon any time they jump onto platforms. Beat Tuto, the tutorial pigeon. Yes, that's a pigeon. Heavily stylized, but I was inspired by a very fat wood pigeon that sits on a tree branch outside our apartment window sometimes. I wanted a round character. Oh boy, there's a round character. I drew four specific poses for Tuto. Jump, fall, stand and run. Look at Tuto move in the most basic of ways. That's, um, not very good, is it? So here's what I do. For starters, and this is the most important piece of advice in this whole video, I cannot stress enough that your platform stroke collision sprite should not be the animation sprite. I generally have a separate sprite named player actual for the movement and collision, with the animated sprite pinned to it being called something like player doll. The primary reason behind this is that animation effects such as squash and stretch will change the shape of a sprite's collision box, so player doll should ideally have no collisions, leaving that job to player actual. Player doll needs two instance variables in particular. Feel free to use any others you may want for any other reason, but create instance variables called squash and stretch. Set them to 1 by default, there's a reason for that which I will explain later, by which I mean now. You need an event running every tick, which will do the following two things. Firstly, set the player doll's instance variable to 2 minus the squash instance variable. This is because I personally only ever make alterations to squash, so stretch should be calculated from that. They should both add up to 2. Secondly, an event to set player doll size to a width of image width multiplied by squash and a height of image height multiplied by stretch. You will need a few events which check for the squash instance variable being over or under a certain amount, and adjust that accordingly by a small amount, multiplied by delta time of course. No need to do this to stretch, since we just made an event to take care of it automatically. Here's where a tiny amount of magic comes in. If you want your character to appear to be softer and bouncier, these adjustments will be a smaller number. For a stiffer character, there will be a larger number. This means you could feasibly use this technique on multiple characters with different results, giving them different personality and feel. Within reason, of course. This method does break if you do crazy things with it, but feel free to tweak and test until it looks right. After some tinkering, I've gone with a value of 2 for each. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now this does nothing, so we need to add a few events driven by player actions to modify the squash instance variable based on what player actual is doing. Lower number for jumping and falling, higher number on having landed. These will be between 0 and 2, as per the way it multiplies the image size. Extreme values may do crazy things, just be careful. But wait, there's a problem with this. The size event I used for the squash and stretch will always give it a positive width, so it's facing right all the time, pretty much undoing the sprite flip I had for moving either direction. Not ideal. So what I've done is make another instance variable named LR, which is just an internal check to see which direction the character is moving based on player input. 0 for moving left, 1 for moving right. And I created additional checks for those to determine whether to draw the player doll width negative or positive. 
game development is like that for me. I'll try something, tweak it, try it, tweak it, and so forth. It's pretty normal for nothing to work well the first time, and hunting down why that may be tends to be the largest part of the process. When I got things working, I added some small additions to the squash instance variable to make my player doll twitch as it moves on the ground, to give the illusion of running. This was a bit of a mess, but here are my events. The gist, in important bullet points, is separate sprites for collision and animations. The animation sprite has its own squash and stretch values. These values both add up to 2, and I only ever change the squash value, from which the stretch value is calculated by the game's events or code. The squash value is set high to squash the player, as in when landing from a fall, and low to stretch the player, as in when falling itself or jumping. And that's it! Please enjoy our squishy new friend Tuto jumping around a forest landscape! Thank you as usual for watching my video. As ever, your mileage may vary as to some of the information here, but hopefully you found something useful. Maybe you found a better way, which is totally cool and you should do your thing. Now, if you'd love to be a good friend and fulfil the algorithm's mighty hunger for clicks so that it may bestow upon me some actual visibility in searches, please thumbs up this video, give my channel a bell, subscribe, and stay beautiful.